Okay, so this is the Frog Sound Morse code or CW QRP kit that you can buy on eBay relatively inexpensively. And it comes to you just like this with all the components in a small little bitty box from China. And I'm going to be going through the uh, uh, creation of this uh, kit transceiver. Now one thing to I want to warn you about is when you buy this, this is all you get. <laughs> no instructions, no anything. So you have to go to the web page and download the instruction manual. And the, the manual um, has <clears throat> tells all about the radio. It uh, tells you about the components, the assembly, uh, shows you the circuit board, gives you some information here. Let's see what else we got. Okay, and some basic information on certain uh, components. Like I say, you have to download this. And you also, you can download a uh, schematic of the kit also. Now this particular kit uh, will run on 12 volts or 9 volts and the uh, if you run it on 9 volts it's uh, supposed to output 2 watts if you run it on 12 volts you can get 3 watts the uh, frequency of the transmitter is on kind of an oddball frequency it's on uh, it's 40 meter 70 0.023. Now I believe I'll have to dig around in here, but I believe that is it's a crystal controlled oscillator. Yeah, there's a little crystal right in there. And uh, what I'm going to experiment once I get it working as it is, is experiment changing the crystal out. There's some places on the internet where you can uh, you can find crystals of different frequencies. So I'm going to try to change the uh, the crystal out and get it on a more common frequency, like um, 70.055 or something like that. But that'll be an experiment for another time. So let's take a look and kind of see what all is in this thing. Uh, this will be the first time I've gotten out of the bag. Now one thing you probably can't uh, see <laughs> is I actually have a electrostatic uh, heel strap on. This is an electrostatic pad. Let me spin the camera around over here. And, uh, I nope, can't see it. Oh, there we go. All right. So let me... Okay, so I zoomed out here. And uh, this is actually a electrostatic pad. This is uh, going through a 1 mega ohm resistor to ground. And you can't see it the way I got the camera set up, but I'm using a uh, heel strap. All right, so let's uh, let's see what we got here. We got the circuit board, and uh, let's see. I'm gonna pull my glasses off so I can see on here. Uh, it has all of the component lettering. They're very clear, unless you're like me and you can't see and you need to take your glasses off. <laughs> But here's J2, U3, Q1, U4, Q3, uh, D1, what do I call it, uh, 
CP8, there's CP5, uh, Y1, that's probably a crystal. The back side of the board uh, has no markings on it. So this is the circuit board we'll be working with. I'll just set that over here. Let's take a look at the components. Now, I'm not real pleased the fact that they just dump all this in here. Oop, one got away from me there. They just kind of all dump it all in here, but uh, we got a heat sink here. Here's a chip. Uh, it's kind of hard to read what that one is, but uh, you can read it. We'll go through the install on that. There's a little socket for a microchip. Uh, what we have here, okay, there's a power adapter. Uh, this is a uh, audio plug of some sort. There's another little chip, probably goes with that one. See, that's what I don't like about it is uh, the leads are bent. You'll have to straighten the leads out. And we got some resistors here, a variety of colors. We'll have to sort those guys out. Okay, re resistors. Uh, there's a, a diode. Some more resistors we got here. There's a big, big resistor. Got uh, some capacitors. Uh, here's a BNC. This will probably be our antenna connection. A potentiometer. I'm guessing that is volume control. Yeah, another audio jack. Uh, if I had to guess, I'd say one was probably actually audio out, and one is probably your keyer or uh, Morse code keyer in. All right, there's another socket, another little chip for a socket that up there. So I'm going to zoom this out just a little bit. <clears throat> you, can, uh, you can see what I got going here. There's that. There's all these little pieces. Capacitors, or not capacitors, yeah, <clears throat> some more capacitors. Here's some transistors. A little bitty, a whole bunch of little bitty capacitors. Here's a, I'm sure this is a toroid. We're gonna have to wire wrap that one. Now what I don't see is we're gonna have to wrap that. Here's another one. We're gonna have to wrap that. I don't see any wire. Don't see any wire. There's another diode. Here's a, okay, here's our crystal, and it is 7.023, and this is why I'm kind of thinking that uh, I can probably just replace this crystal with a different crystal and get it on a better frequency. Another little socket. This uh, appears to be an inductor of some sorts. A lot of resistors, a lot of little diodes. These these are appear to be zeners, just from the look of them. This is a, a little potentiometer. Yep, yeah, it'll be the potentiometer. Okay, here's some uh, these probably nuts and washers for the audio connections. Here's a transistor. This is probably the power transistor. I'm, a, I'm guessing, and probably more than likely bolts up here to this heat sink. Which is another good question. Um, 
<laughs> I don't see the screw for the heat sink. <laughs> More transistors. We're just, I'm just kind of sorting these little things out here in their general category. A bunch of little resistors. Now look at this one. This is kind of funny. Look at these guys. They're uh, They look like they've been reclaimed because the leads aren't even uh, the proper length on those. Rather odd. And I see one one little diode actually it looks like a two element a two element LED two element light emitting diode some more transistors more resistors so as you can see there's quite a few little pieces to this guy So we'll have to uh, we'll have to go over the installation of these things. Now, at one point in time in my life, when I was in the Navy, I was uh, certified for solder work, and I will probably show you some of how I do it. I go to probably a little more extreme than most amateurs would I would say uh, mine is more mill spec soldering I guess you'd say because that's how I was trained but I will show you how I do that and a uh, whole bunch of capacitators here okay so I generally have them this stuff sort of sorted out <laughs> we typically what I'm going to typically do is start by installing the little socket gizmos for the chips I'll probably start putting those on um, and then once those are on I, t I like starting right in the center of the board this is me personally um, I like starting in the center of the board and working sort of a circular pattern outward uh, that way I can solder, spin the board, solder, spin the board. That way I'm always working on my right hand side. And we'll probably use our little, uh, our little weller here. So, this is sort of just an intro as to what's going up in this little project. And again, this is a uh, frog sound micro telegraph transceiver kit. Uh, this is a very small volume of a simple 40 meter band micro power amplitude telegraph transceiver, 9 volt square battery or external 9 to 12 power supply. Spread good time and the nearby provinces hundreds of kilometers amateur radio communications this machine was first introduced by domestic radio enthusiasts uh, by also but also it plays a nice name frogs frogs called K kit 3.1 public version um, there you have it all right so there is the first video which is the introduction to the kit and I appreciate you watching AF5DM.